Wow, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today we're gonna talk about some shady music industry practices because artists need to be aware of this stuff. And what inspired this video was actually when YB in the mirror basically said it on Instagram that a label tried to F him out of his hit single, Rubbing Off the Paint, because his manager actually sold the beat of the song to the label. The label bought that, and they basically tried to stronghold him into signing a deal with them just because they like, hey, we got the rights. We own the song technically because we own the beat. And if you don't come with us, then we're going to try to put a stop to it. But I've already touched on some of these topics in some of my videos. So I wanted to get the homie Sir Love just to get his perspective on all of these shady practices and inform you guys on a lot of things that, that are very real to happen. Let's hop into it. Yeah, I, th I think it's definitely important for artists to keep their paperwork together. A lot of things that artists don't understand in the game today is they don't understand the value of what they have. Um, and what it can turn into long term. You know, you have the long term check, you got the short term check, and the short term check is always going to be appealing at exactly. the beginning, right? Yep. You understand that people are in the business of making money. So if anyone's ever going to offer you a price for something, best be rest assured that they're going to flip it for something that's higher. So if you don't know your value, it's just a jug. You know, someone will come up to you and they got something, they're trying to sell it to you for five, but you know it's worth 500. You're going to exactly. take the five, sell it for 500, exactly. when really they probably could have sold it to you for 300 and you still would have bought it. And and it would have been a more of a fair trade for both parties involved. Um, uh, the tricky thing about this scenario is that the the label was, or uh, you know, the parties involved that had control over the record was then kind of holding the scenario for ransom because at that time period they wanted to do future business with the particular uh, yeah. artist. And because they wanted to do future business with the particular artist, they were able to hold the record over his head and say, yeah, but we own all of your assets. We own everything that makes you hot right now. Yep. And unless he goes out and creates other records that are popping or just as hot, which means that he has some type of system or some type of strong fan base where he can replicate the success of that first record, then he's really in a, a position of weakness in the negotiation. Exactly. And I mean, so one thing, that it could sound kind of scary and crazy to a lot of um, you guys, but so basically you have a song. Let's just say this situation, it, they might not be buying the beat, but there's a lot of other scenarios where, hey, you might be talking to somebody and they say, hey, let's 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 get this deal going. You talk to the label, nothing. You say, you know what? Nah, we're not good on that deal. We don't want to sign with you guys. And then at that point, some people might come back and say. Well, if you don't want to sign, how about this? Because we got this on you, we got this on you, we got this on you. We we done trademarked your name. We done yep. all kind of things. Where matter of fact, how would, what are some scenarios that you know about specifically? Uh, scenarios that I've seen. I, mean, I can't speak on anyone's situation. Okay, um, true. But what I can right. do is say the trademark and the name thing is definitely real. Yeah. Um, pretty much, it, it's not hardball. Like labels are not out here to get you. Um, you know that's kind of the thought process, but all of them are right. not evil, but you do have different people that have their own incentives. A lot of times the person that's going to take advantage of you is the person that's trying to close the deal with the label. So a lot of times you go mm -hmm. to a particular label and that A&R that works at that label has his own label and he wants to sign you under his yeah. label before signing you to the major scenario. And in those situations is where um, the situation can get desperate because said A&R has already kind of hyped you to the building or he's already kind of presented the project or he's been tasked with bringing the project and he's on a sharp he or she is on a sharp deadline and so they might apply pressure to you and it, it, you know it could be the label don't get me wrong labels labels can fuck you right yeah. but you know a situation that I, that I've seen is you know you're doing a negotiation with a particular uh, with a particular company you're trying to uh, figure out the best way to, to bring your project into their building for whatever reason you're not with it and so they turn around and they can do things to take control of the scenario they can trademark your name like you mentioned before yep. buy and own ownership of your name so that you can no longer use your name unless you come through them you can mm. no longer sign using that name and go anywhere else and anywhere that name is represented they can make you take it down so if you have merch if you have exactly. a song out there things of that nature um, they can also um, go in and buy out your contract if you sign to your manager like if it's not a manager agreement and it's actually a label agreement that you're signed to they can buy out your contract to your manager and still own rights to you um, if you've given over your legal rights to your manager or to your production company or to anybody like the right to sign for you then they can buy that person out and that person can sign and put you in a crazier situation um, slow that down and break that down because you got a little fast I want to make sure they caught and understand what you're talking about because I know what you're talking about Okay, so you can, it's common practice as an artist for you to give the right 
uh, to sign for you over to someone else. Because say you're performing in another country and you have a check that's waiting for you right now in Atlanta, you need that check to do whatever you're doing in said country because you're running out of cash and you're not there. And the bank is not going to clear those funds unless yep. there's a signature on it. So you've given another person the authority, granted them the right to sign on your behalf. That individual then can sign that check and then clear your funds to allow you to continue doing what you're doing in said country. It can get real tricky if that individual signs and commits you to something that you didn't want to commit to, which a lot of times can happen if you don't have the trust. Normally, the people that have those rights or your attorney or, or, your, man, or, or your manager will have those type of uh, rights. And I forgot what it's called. Uh, the name slips me at this exact moment, but it's, it's in a lot of contracts. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty standard practice, but that can go twisted um, at any given time. Um, you can also see crazier things like they can uh, trademark the, the logo or the yep. album cover or the artwork or things of that nature. So you can't even post the artwork on your streaming platform. You can't make any money off the merch. Yeah. You, can't, you can't do any of that. Um, they can uh, go back in and they can do all sorts of things. They can go down to the split sheet level. It can go down to the record registration level. It can go down to Dirty Ball where they're blackballing your record on radio. Yep. It can go, I mean, there's so many different ways the game can be played to kind of force you to comply if they had, you know, negative and, and malice intentions to, you know, to acquire you. But that's not going to be the usual practice. Like they may do one or two things, but you're not yeah. going to see a full boatload of bullish coming your way because then, <laughs> then you're not going to sign, right? Yeah. No, one, no one wants, they don't want to sign you if you bullied and they've like enslaved you. They want yeah. to sign you and you feel like you're happy. Most scenarios when an artist gets screwed, the artist has no idea they're getting screwed, which is the best scenario because the artist is happy, they perform their best work and they don't know that they're losing. The money. best scenario for the record <laughs> the label. The best scenario for the record <laughs> label. The best scenario for the artist yeah. is just to do your freaking paperwork. You know, make sure your split sheets are on point, make sure you're, you're, uh, you've done all your publishing paperwork, your PROs, yep. uh, make sure you're registered, yep. make sure that you've registered your trademark, make sure you've registered your name, trademark your name, all your other, like the paperwork. The stuff that people don't want to do, that's the stuff that makes you money. That's your check. Right. So with that being said, I want to just go ahead and get your opinion because I always um, talk about this from my standpoint, but when do you decide that it's actually worth going ahead and doing that paperwork? Because you got some artists, they go through these phases, right? They say, hey, I got this name. Two years later, they have another name. They still haven't blown up. When do you decide when it comes to an artist that we need to go ahead and do all of our due diligence? Well, if you have, it depends. So if you're in a scenario, some companies have money, some companies don't. So it depends on, for you guys, it depends on where you are financially. If you have any type of bread, then all this stuff should be done day one out the gate. If you don't have bread, then you're probably trying to hustle up bread and you're moving money around and you may not get to some of these things. You may be trying to decide between a trademark and, and marketing your project and you may be looking at a $1,500 tab and you're looking at, well, shit, you know, I got to get this record out. Um, in those scenarios, um, you're gambling. You, you gamble, and I've gambled, so you know I get it. You know sometimes you gotta gamble, you gotta roll your dice, you gotta throw it at the records. Just make sure you've done the back end. At minimum, if you lose your name, you can change it. Like you know, Soldier Boy. Look how he spells his name, for example. Perfect yep. example. Bow Wow uh, didn't own his name, so he had to go from Lil Bow Wow to just Bow Wow, right? Yep. You can survive with you know not paying for a trademark or things of that nature, but you can't survive when you lose ownership to your track, when you lose rights to your record, when you when you lose things that are are so valuable that you can't get them back. Perfect. Those primary assets. So go ahead and in your opinion, if you list, obviously everybody knows music, right? The song. Mm -hmm. What are the next few things that you would personally try to actually go ahead and say, hey, I need to lock these down if I got the money for it? If I had the money, things that I would do, I make sure that uh, I'm not sure how the artist is doing it, but I would open up a company as an artist, go ahead and get and get the EIN, yep. get the company name, all that stuff, LLC or INC, depending on if you got partnerships and how that's structured and taxes, and that gets real complicated d depending on what route you want to go. But either way, you're going to go e LLC or you're going to go EIN. Um, you want to make sure you're trademarking all your different names. You want to make sure you're trademarking all of the different artwork and things that you're doing throughout. You want to copyright everything that you're doing. You also, and I say everything I'm talking about, even the text on the website, you want to copy that. You want to copyright um, all of your records. You want to make sure you register all of your records uh, with the PRO. You want to make sure you have split sheets on all your records and make sure all those records are signed. You also want to make sure that you've done all of your, uh, your, your back-end publishing and, and things of that nature and documents associated with that. You probably want to sign with the publisher um, or a co-publisher or a sub-publisher um, or yeah, I do all those, make a choice in that area. All right, you know what? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a so list, man. That's a, that's, a list. That's, a, that's, that's a real list. It's a checklist. So what I'm going to do, because I'm probably going to have to cut, you're going to fuck somebody's <laughs> mind up, right? So what 
Name, just give me two things. Okay. Yeah. I got my track. I own my track. Right. Two other things where you would say these are the next two things. We you know it's your, a full list of things. You on your track, the very next thing you need to do is do your split sheets. That is very split important. Sheets. You want split sheets is probably the most all the money starts with the split sheet. I'd have your split sheets, I have it signed by everyone that's involved. I'd have my IPI numbers on that, have all the proper information on the split sheets done the right way. Um, and then at minimum I would register those records uh, with the PRO and copyright them. Like you know, split sheets, copyright, and PRO are something that goes together. Right. At minimum, I do those things. Right. Okay. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and cut the video off right there. We did float into some other topics that I think are important, and I'll put the videos up, but I didn't want that in the same video. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you like it, you might as well share it. Other than that, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.